friends and welcome back to another vlog. This vlog is actually extra special. You might notice that I'm in an entirely new location um, because I'm actually at my friend Monica's house in New York City. It's so fun to be back in the city since I've moved away. So much has changed and so much has stayed the same in some regards, but this vlog is going to be a little fun, book shopping, New York vlog moment. We're gonna be visiting some of our favorite bookshops in the city, doing some shopping, get lunch, go to some cafes, maybe a dessert, and all around just hang out and have a good day and have good vibes. So that is what this vlog is about. Time to shop, we're about to head out, but I of course wanted to intro this vlog and then I'm sure we'll do a little bit of a haul at the end of the video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and head out. All right, I'm hungry. I'm excited for lunch. Here is a little OOTD. Before we officially head out, very excited. And Monica has officially joined the vlog. Hi. We've made it to Seaport. Going to Seaport McNally, which is probably one of our favorite bookstores in the city. It's yes. so pretty. Seaport's also just cool. It's kind of a different yeah. vibe. So I would Cape Cod. Very Cape Cod. Very <laughs> like we're on a port, which that's what it was. Mm -hmm. um, so we've just gotten here. We're gonna see what we can find, and uh, I'll try not to buy too much. We have arrived. This bookstore is huge and just beautiful. It's a great one to get lost in. McNally Seaport is just too good. It's, it's like so the good. biggest bookstore, I feel like. Yeah, and they have such a good selection. And it's and such it's a like, varied selection. And easy to browse. Oh, yeah. Style. Everything like, is organized. It's the best. Like, the Strand is probably bigger, but it's so... It's disoriented. Yeah, yeah. Like, this, you're like, oh, I feel like American literature or translated work or science fiction fantasy. It's all so easy to find and very aesthetic. It's yeah. beautiful in here. And there's a cafe. <laughs> Win. Monica's trying to convince me to buy heavy books that I won't be able to carry back in my carry-on. You know, sometimes it is what it is. you just have to do what you have to do. <laughs> Making a quick lunch pit stop between bookstores at Thai Diner, one of our faves. Maybe a cafe, get a coffee, yes. some more book shopping. Exactly. We're in Soho, as you can tell. Look at that cinematography. <laughs> but uh, we're almost there.
done some damage. Yes. Monica was contemplating which book she wanted to. It took me a while. Bye. She did get one that's apparently, what's the phrasing? This one? Oh yeah. It's described as, what is it? American Psycho, but for hot girls. Love that. A big sell, if you ask <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hi friends, it's a few days later, but we are officially back from book shopping. So we thought we would do a bit of a haul. We went to three bookstores, but we yeah. I think we only really did shopping at two of them. Mm -hmm. um, but the middle one, which is really cool, is like a nonprofit, but they predominantly only have used books, so you know how the story goes. Sometimes <laughs> you find stuff, sometimes you don't, but it was still really fun to peruse nonetheless. But Great. the first place we went to was McNally Jackson. Yes. Which I think that's my favorite bookstore in New York City. Or one of them, at least. Yeah, the Valley Jackson Seaport is so beautiful. It's so, I mean, all of their locations are super cool and they have like a great system of organization, but yeah. the Seaport location especially is just like so Next beautiful. Level. Yeah. It's like creaky, yeah, you know? Yeah, it's very Cape Cod. Yeah. Style. It's like, it's very like wood and couches and cafe and like, yeah. it's just like a really, really nice time. Okay. The first book I picked up. I saw basically immediately upon entering, mm -hmm. and then Monica said that you had already owned this, yeah, but the, the paperback, hardcover. yeah, the paperback edition is just stunning. It's, it's called so Everyone Knows Your Mother Is a Witch by Rivka Galchen. This was definitely a cover buy, but then when I actually read the synopsis and I just kind of saw some lines about being about witches, yeah. I knew I was really interested in it. I love a witch historical fiction story, but this is set in Germany and the 17th century is that how it works 1618 <laughs> and we basically follow a woman who is kind of like an eccentric person in town she does herself no favors of being like in the way that she's like outspoken she's involved in sciences she has a very clear point of view and like how she wants to go about doing things yeah. but she gets accused of being a witch so i think that Scary is times. this story and it's cool because this particular work is fiction, mm -hmm. but it draws on real historical documents and infused with an intensity of imagination, sly humor, and an intellectual fire. So that sounded pretty interesting to me. So this is the first book I picked up. So I got one book at McNally Jackson. Um, so you mentioned this, but their, whether they organize their books, especially their, their international fiction is really cool because they have it organized by country. Mm -hmm. So I always like to go and see what they have new in the Korean fiction. Um, and one of the books that they had is The Old Woman with a Knife. And this one sounds really interesting because we follow this elderly woman who is a retired assassin. And she's sort of living this like modest, quiet life. But I believe like there's a new enemy that has come to her. And it sounds like really fun and interesting but also just like very thoughtful mm -hmm. um i love like some of the blurbs on the back um one person wrote an unforgettable portrait more than a thriller the old woman with a knife is a profound observation of aging and decline love and compassion um and it also talks about how it like defies these expectations of a society that like wants to erase her mm -hmm. um and so yeah i just thought that was really interesting i hadn't heard of it before but it's an international bestseller so i'm really excited for it and i love the cover i think it's really cool though yeah, like, very striking yeah the purple and the red and the night kind of like james bondy yeah you yeah. know what i mean yeah in I terms agree. of like the aesthetics yeah of it. no 100 percent I'm, I'm really interested in that. I like any book that centers characters that are often erased, especially from genres like that, yeah. which I think is interesting. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I'm excited sounds for that. Really good. Yeah. The next book I got, I am still not entirely sure how I'm gonna fit in my suitcase. It's a rather chunky hardcover <laughs> fantasy book, but yeah. I've just seen so many good things about it. It's like a newer release and it was on my radar last year and I just could not say no. And that is The Spear Cuts Through Water and the, st the book itself is just stunning. Um, yeah. The cover, but also these end pages so are just pretty. unreal. I kind of wish that was the cover. I know, it's just so <laughs> good. Um, I've heard such good things about this just from a writing style point of view and the structure of the story is just one that really, really calls out to me. It's a book where it's basically set in this fantasy landscape where it's ruled by what they say, like the three terrors, this mm -hmm. emperor and his evil sons basically. And the reason why they're able to rule with such an iron fist, if you will, is because they are able to harness the power of a God they have trapped beneath their castle. Ooh. But at the beginning of this book, that God is released by some like young people, some mm -hmm. young, young guards people in the mm -hmm. castle. And it's about like the God coming back into the world and like experiencing life I think again and they go on a journey together and it's like very much a quest story but I think it has a lot of like emotional character elements as well as a really interesting fantasy plot line yeah. and I love when authors really like 
go into the psychological realities of a lot of the fantasy things that are like Absolutely. really traumatic but might be kind of glossed over for the sake of like a plot like yeah, an exciting yeah. plot you know so I don't know I've heard really good things about this, this is an author that has a lot of buzz for his writing in general and I yeah. haven't read any books by him so I'm really looking forward to it so I grabbed yeah, this and it is beautiful it's a chunker though it it's is a chunker yeah, it is that <laughs> for a carry on point of view yeah all right and then the second bookstore we went to was the strand a classic, classic. New York <laughs> stop I think we both got two books there as well yeah. amazing do you want to start sure so I feel like my haul has like a theme of just like mm. kind of maybe bad people yeah. <laughs> um so the first one I got is boy parts and this is one that I've heard a lot about like buzz about but mm -hmm. I didn't really know the full um you sold me about this book with like a line yeah 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 um but yeah I didn't really know the full like gist of it mm -hmm. until finally reading it um and one of the things that a, a blurb or I think it was a review or a blurb said mm -hmm. about it was that it was like um American Psycho but for hot girls <laughs> and I was like yeah I need that uh and basically we follow this young artist who's living in New York City she's or not sorry in London and she's a photographer and she's kind of been exiled from the art scene mm -hmm. and she's been taking uh started taking like these really explicit photos of like average looking men and it like gets her into this like whole other area of the art scene I don't really know it just sounds like she's a disaster uh -huh. and maybe also evil yeah and I love reading about just awful people doing awful, awful things. things so yeah. I'm excited for this one and also it's beautiful like it's the a good design cover. is just great the first book I grabbed was a book I've been meaning to pick up for a long time because it's a sequel oh I didn't know you got that yeah, yeah it's Parable of the Talents by Octavia E. Butler which is the sequel to Parable of the Sower yeah. which was one of my favorite books of the year when I read it and just like one of my favorite books of life it's so good very disturbing and like yeah, yeah. eerily hits home you yeah. know what i mean um but this isn't a, dr a direct sequel and it's also interesting because i think this was supposed to be a trilogy but it's unfinished yeah but a lot of people do a lot of like writing and thinking about how the series sits as almost being unfinished the first book peril of the sower is set in like the 2020s in a american setting after like a climate crisis basically leads to the societal collapse of the world yeah um we follow our main character lauren who lives in california in like this gated area with her family and her father's like a preacher and they all kind of work together to survive lauren herself has um, something called hyper empathy meaning that she can feel pain from other people so she has to keep that secret structurally the book's kind of written like a diary mm -hmm. so she's like contemplating a lot and like writing things as they experience to her and a large part of the book is her thinking and then realizing that to survive she herself her family everyone around her needs to kind of adapt Got and it. go on this kind of journey and she physically goes on a journey and she also yeah. like contemplates religion kind of creating her own religion it's like really really interesting and how it's written is just so good because yeah. you're really living in her head and it's also just the setting of it is just bananas it was written in the 90s so like the future site Octavia E. Butler had was like yeah. a little a little much almost but I want I've been meaning to pick up the sequel and reading the sequel for a long time and I'm really interested to see where her story takes us next so Amazing. I grabbed this because I was like I need this <laughs> so my last book is this one called Diquette which just came out and honestly half the reason half the thing that sold me on this is that it's signed but I loved the author's signature because oh, yeah. it says love to you stay perfect and <laughs> you're I like thought, I am perfect I thanks. am thank you I just thought that was really funny but also what sold me on this is that I was reading this review and this person wrote that this book will be really confusing for straight people mm. and it will cause a lot of fights between queer people and I was like yeah I need this <laughs> I love books that like that like cause a lot of discourse yeah discourse yeah. and we're like yeah where you have a lot of people who are people like no that's the takes. worst thing I've ever yeah. read or that's the best thing I've ever mm -hmm. read then I feel like that's always like the most interesting mm -hmm. but this is this one is set in New York City and it follows this queer woman who goes on a 10-day getaway with her partner and then two other queer couples mm -hmm. and it's sort of exploring like very superficial uh like social ladder climbing elements of like mm -hmm. New York City queer culture and I just like I'm so interested in like this author's take on that so yeah this one definitely has gotten like really very polarizing yeah. reviews as far as I can tell like some people do really seem to hate it um but I'm excited just to see what it's all about yeah, yeah. I love that though because it's like 
it's sometimes nice to either like hate it or love it. Like, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's better to pick up a book and just be, at least feel strongly versus feel like, eh. Yeah. I have I no agree. opinions. I have no thoughts on that because it was just whatever, you know? Yeah, for sure. And the last book I got um, is a book I've also been meaning to pick up and I was excited to see that it was in paperback mostly because it's easier to transport around. <laughs> um, and that is Trust by Hernan Diaz. This one, the Pulitzer, and uh, it's lit fic. It's set in the 20s into the 30s, and conceptually speaking, it's just one that kind of sounds interesting to me, yeah. even though it does center, like, financial institutions, which kind of sounds boring, but I don't know why. I, is in, this the one you, you said, like, might have succession vibes? Yeah, I was thinking, like, this almost felt like this could have, like, succession vibes, but, yeah. like, in the past, because yeah. it really dives into, like, a lot of the psychological aspects of being incredibly wealthy mm -hmm. um but this starts out in the 20s it's at new york so with the roar of the stock market money is everywhere Gilded people are age. gaining exactly yeah. all of those things and then it goes into um 1937 this book actually spans um over a century of time yeah and it puts together like four different stories that are okay. also apparently like competing against each other almost oh, like interesting. they kind of like contradict each other in a way Got it's it. honestly like reading the synopsis it says a lot but like not actually too much about mm -hmm. the plot itself mm -hmm. but it clearly is going to center like wealth power likely like economic status gained through Got time it. i think mostly set in new york city i don't know but it's a uh, very beloved and I, those concepts just sounded pretty interesting no, to yeah, me that's super interesting i love lit fic books too that take place over like a really long yeah span. i especially love like when you have multiple mm. time periods and they all like come play together off of especially other. with like different characters in different yeah. time periods i just really like that uh writing structure so I also grabbed this. Alrighty guys, so that is our little book haul from our book shopping day in New York City. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you soon with another one soon. Bye.